Welcome back to my Drone How video series, which talks about drones in construction. My name is Raida Boost, and in this episode, we talk about how to use ground contrapoints to get more precise models through photogrammetry. Yes, we have touched drones photogrammetry based workflows before, but not so much about how we can reduce measurement errors. For example, if we use today's uh, RTK drone, like one in here, then the approximate precision is about 5 cm and x, y, z coordinate. Yeah? And in case when this is enough, we do not have to do anything else. Very easy to fly our drone and carry out our data analysis. But once we include ground control points, we can reduce our error to about 3 cm. To be able to do that, uh, Surveyor has marked fixed points in terms of coordinates x, y and z. And before we start our drone survey, we place such weatherproof mats onto those fixed points. As you see, we have a hole in the middle so that we can align this mat to our fixed point and the size of the mat and also black and white creed is uh, only for that so that we can more easily see it uh, from our images. We can use multiple mats uh, which cover our measurement area and once this step is done we can run our drone survey and then continue with our data analysis. So, Let's now take a look how we can include crowd control points into our data workflows. I will start by showing a couple of images first. For example, in this image we can see a surveyor's fixed point. If I zoom in, I can take a closer look. So we have a nail in our pavement and we simply align our mat with this point. And we can use some stones to fix our mat so that um, lighter wind doesn't shift it away. So it's aligned from the center point. And in that way we can include as many mats as we want to and into those locations that we want to by including maybe locations from different areas at our construction site. So for example in this project those red tots does mark those ground control points and also mats are placed onto those locations. We need to consider that uh, if we want to measure several times also in this project, drones missions were carried out um, over one year each week, weekly basis, and it may happen that uh, some of our control points may deconstruct it or disappear. For example, if some curb is um, reconstructed then uh, we don't have any more one point. We need to include those points into those locations in where we can ensure that uh, if we want to measure longer periods like uh, construction process, then those should be carefully selected. As we can see, we have um, quite many of uh, points included, which we now use in our photogrammetry workflows. Of course, this drawing is also in correct coordinates. If I move on to some location, I can see down below my x, y, z. And all those points are basically prepared based on surveyor's measurements and included into a simple text file. We can see we have a same name here and then we have x, y and z. We will use this file to import those points into our photogrammetry workflow. So let's move on and let's open up our photogrammetry software. In this video I'm using context capture again. I've been using also in my previous video series the same software. Obviously you can use different packages to carry out uh, similar procedures but also because I have talked about uh, context capture before then in this video I'm focusing on to ground control point workflows only. But of course, some steps are the same as we did before. So 
First I'm creating a new project and I will then select the location of my project. I also give project name and then I hit OK. So first step is to include photos from my drone survey. I go to photos, then add entire directory and then I select the folder from where I want to include those photos. I do include drone mission which has been carried out from the elevation of 50 meters and I do have about 200 photos. And the next step is already to include ground control point data. So I go to service tab and because I do have saved my fixed coordinates into separate file, I can include this file through survey points tab. So I hit import service from file, common formats, and then selecting text file and by hitting open. Now I select my coordinate system and OK again. I can see the same list of points and also using the same names as in my CAD drawing. So next step is to start mapping from which images I can find this ground control point. In which order you do that doesn't matter. You can select photo by photo or you can do and finish your job in terms of one control point, it's up to you. So for example, let's pick T10. Once I select my T10, software already assumes from where or from which images this control point can be found because I'm using RTK drone and those images are already with XY coordinates. It can be assumed from which photos this point can be found. I can see those question marks which are marked with yellow color and this helps me to find those photos from where I want to mark some specific contour point. I don't have to pick each and every photo which is including uh, my ground contour point or my mat but about four to five images is good enough. So if I select my photo I can see that uh, okay in this image I do have my mat in this location. But those four to five images should be chosen in that way that this mat stays into so-called half circle down below. In that way I can get more precise results. So I'm not picking this image because uh, this mat is uh, way too far but instead I probably pick for example this image and once I zoom in I can see my mat and then I align this yellow circle with my mat center point. So for example I zoom in and this black and white grid helps me to do that. Of course the pixel size depends from which height I fly my drone and uh, it can be easily calculated but also you can see this resolution once you start to create your drone survey program. In here, because I'm flying at 50 meters, my pixel size is a bit less than 1.4 centimeters. Once I have aligned my circle, then I can click accept position. And this image is now included under my crown contour point. Again, I do need to find another image from where I can pick this same mat or contour point. For example, I go back and maybe I do select also this image. I zoom in and then align my circle and then accept position. Now, if you want to carry on and include a different point and different image, then don't forget that you first have to select this new point. For example, if I want to map D1, then I select my D1 and then if I scroll down I can see that okay yellow markings and I do have my point for example in those images. This is my T1. Again I try to find those images which include my control point in a lower part. Okay this is good enough. I zoom in and I align my yellow circle again like this and accept position. So in that way I have to continue and include four to five images under each
ContraPoint. Because I have done that before, I will now open up a finished project and then let's talk about those workflows and what kind of uh, quality reports I can see before I actually start to generate my final 3D model. I have opened up my finished project and if I go to the same block in where I finished previously, I can see that under my service tab I do have all my control points with four images. And if I click on one particular image, I can see that I have been trying to stay under this half circle area. Once I have carried out this matching workflow, I can also see some general error if I move my mouse just on top of my control point. And this error is shown basically against what was before and what it is now. So how it was predicted before, because we use RTK drone already, then the precision is quite good, 5 centimeters or so, but now we can increase it up to 3 centimeters. So if you see that uh, somewhere this error is maybe too large, then you can go and try to fix it. But uh, before I do that, I carry out a general calculation. So I go to general tab and then I hit submit error triangulation. Left click here, process with context capture engine. I use default name, next. Then in this tab, I select that I want to use control points and also final rigid registration, I want to use control points. I hit next again. I usually recommend uh, default settings, so I submit and then I get my preliminary model. Now, because I have already calculated it, I won't do that again. Instead, I go to that calculated block and I can see that, okay, four photos cannot be used for reconstructions. That is okay because quite possibly those photos are close to my boundary or maybe those photos are including only trees. So this is just fine. Of course, I can see which photos they are, but I know that, uh, as I described, this is the case right now. But once I calculate my preliminary model, I can then also see my quality report. So view, quality report, left click. And if I now click on control points, then I can see my errors. And if I see that, okay, somewhere the error is too large, then I can go back to my block one and try to fix those locations in my images. Or maybe I can also switch some images in where my control point is in lower circle. I can also see that uh, this report shows which points might be with too large error. If I'm satisfied with that, then it is okay. Otherwise, I can go back to my block one and do some changes with my T12. In current case, I'm satisfied. So I close this report and then I can start to generate my final model. So I hit new reconstruction, 3D reconstruction, and I check my calculation parameters. Also that I do have my coordinate system selected. All other settings are default which has been discussed already in my previous video. So I go back to my general tab and then I hit submit new production. Process voice, context capture engine. I use default name, next, purpose. This time I'm creating 3D mesh, but uh, I can also create 3D point cloud. So I click next. I'm using default context capture format, which can be used also for web sharing. I won't select it at the moment, but uh, I'm hitting next and then again coordinate system and next again my pounding box. I can change it here. I hit next and then the location to where I want to save my final result. Again, I'm not submitting this job because I have done it already. So I hit cancel and instead let's take a look the final result. Once the calculation has been finished, I can go directly to my production. I can see that this calculation took about um, 
two hours. And once I click 3D view tab, I can see my 3D model, but I also can see my control points. And of course they are colored in the same way as previously shown that one control point is yellow. And maybe I can decide that uh, perhaps I don't use this point at all, or I can go back to my block one and try to fix it. Anyway, if I zoom in to my model and let's pick just um, one control point as an example. For example, this point is my D15. If I zoom in and if I open up also my control points file in where I do have those survey points T15, X, Y and Z. And if I now use my measurement tools, clicking measurements, coordinate, I also select my coordinate system and then I select my center point from this model and I can see that actually those X, Y and Z are matching quite good. It doesn't mean that all my points are with the same error, but uh, this is it. Actually, I can get very good results by using control points with my RTK drone. And I can definitely increase my precision in terms of my model if this is needed. And by having a better model in terms of absolute error, I can use this model in different workflows, like comparing my drone model with my building information model. Also, I can carry out, for example, comparisons in terms of 4D analysis or matching basically my drone survey with my project schedule. So this video was all about how to include control points into drone survey workflow. As you saw, it's actually quite an easy workflow, which can be carried out in different software packages. If you got excited to see my next episode, please do subscribe to my channel and you get notifications once I upload a new video. Bye bye.